What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. I got the Kelly Coop sitting behind me here. I was walking past it today when I made a little YouTube short video and the fender gap, the fender to door gap just caught my eye as I was doing the video and I knew it was there, I'm well aware. However, it caught my eye for the last time. So needless to say, I got some tools and at the same time, I noticed that I still had this ugly ass antenna just sitting here and I stumbled upon one of the antenna delete plates. So I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and mess with this fender today and try and get it to fit a little bit better and get rid of that nasty antenna at the same time. All right, so first things first, when we're looking at this door, we see we have a really good line right here. The door opens and closes fine. There's no issues. It's nice and tight and solid, but then we have this door gap here. Now, there's a number of different types of gaps that sometimes we can look at. I actually see some little bit of tape line paint there. I'm gonna fix that as well. But getting back into sometimes the fender gets pushed out from people jacking up on the pinch welds on the underside. But when we look down here, everything's nice and straight. We actually don't have the classic, I jacked my car up on the pinch welds and underneath that fender where it actually makes the fender flex and bow out. So it actually needs to go in just a little bit, not too much, just a touch and we need to try and get it back just a little bit. If we look up here, this can be a telltale sign. You can actually see this fender can go back towards the pillar a little bit. And again, it's not much, you know, just even, you know, a couple sixteenths of an inch is gonna make all the difference in the world down there. And another thing that we need to look at is our alignment over here. So this is tight, the hood is tight and Front bumper cover, in fact, could come over just a little bit. And you can see we got a bigger gap on this side. So in fact, it looks like the whole hood can come over just a little bit. So it'll kind of free up some room so we can kind of try and stick our fender up and almost tweak it over just a little bit. So I know that all sounds confusing as I'm just saying it right now, but we'll get into that in a minute. Not sure if this is latched, it is. All right, so now that I get the hood popped, there's one very important thing, and you guys might be wondering, well, why is it off in the first place? The car's been repainted at some point, and I've been very transparent. When I did the feature on this car, I said, you know what? There's no VIN stickers on the front bumper or on either one of the fenders. So chances are maybe something happened at some point. You can definitely tell there's a little bit of a wrinkle right here. So we know that something probably happened in this corner. That fender got replaced. And on this side, everything looks kind of the way that it should. But in reality, if we had a light impact on this side, you guys can see behind the battery here how it's, you know, kind of bowed out. And that's actually a pretty easy fix. That, some wood and a couple big hammers, we can get that straightened out pretty good. But it's possible that impact over there slightly shifted some things over here. You never know or it's just poor fender alignment and installation, but I'm gonna hopefully tweak this enough by loosening up these bolts right here, and there's one as well on the inside of the door, so I'm gonna loosen all those up. I'm gonna see if we can't get that fender to move just a little bit, and we barely need it to move at all, but we should be able to get this sitting better, and then ultimately, if we need to move that hood over just a tad to get it to sit a little bit nicer, then we'll do that as well. All right, so first things first, let's do the easy job. We'll put on this little delete plate. It's pretty straightforward. We got some two-way adhesive on the underside of this. So all we really need to do is take off the original antenna housing, four screws.
Well, that one actually came off pretty easy. Sometimes you need to get a pair of channel locks or whatever on there. So what you choose to do with this is up to you. If you're still running your inner fender, you can just kind of let it tuck back in there and just say goodbye. Next time we have the inner fender out, we will get to it and we can zip tie it up. Uh, another thing, if you wanted to get really clever, so you could open this door, is if you actually reach in behind the rubber grommet boot here, and this is a classic rusting area for your Fox body, um, you can actually get access to the wire and you can pull it through the kick panel. Actually, if you open your glove box door and hang it down, you can actually get right in there and you can pull that out. However, I'm gonna route mine and tuck it up somewhere neat because if you leave it connected, you'll actually still be able to get some radio stations. All right, so next step, we got some wax and grease remover and I'm just gonna go around the area because I wanna make sure that our two-way tape is gonna stick All right, so even though I did the wax and grease remover, you can see there's still a little bit of a line there. I know this car was ceramic coated and I'd rather not have it. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of compound and see if I can't remove this staining that's in the paint. Got this uh, Meguiar Scratch X. And it's just a compound that uh, it's good to get little scratches out. Oh yeah. This actually works perfect. All right. So you can see we got rid of all that staining, which means now we just take the Film off the back of our plate, line up. So one actually goes in this bigger hole and then these two just kind of go in here. And now if Casual Customs is watching this video, I'm gonna remind him that he was supposed to send me one of his delete plates. And luckily enough for me, this actually came with some parts that I got. So I had one laying around, but Casual, need some of these, man, hook me up. All right, so next task, you can see here, there's some buildup. I don't know what it is, if it's like wax, paint, some body work. Oh, I actually just think it's like wax buildup. Could be wrong with that, it's on the inside. Anyways, I'm just gonna take this razor blade Kind of get rid of it because man, that was sort of an eyesore looking in there. It's hard as hell, I'll tell you that. All right, there we go, nice and smooth. So we're good there. So now we're going to move on to getting this fender right. So you got it. Loosen these guys up. Nothing too crazy. Now some paint is going to flake off because these were all painted over. It's kind of part of the game. Here. Okay. So we've now got our fender loose. So looks like I can get it a little bit. So a little trick that I'm gonna do that I'm gonna show you guys is um, you know, wedge something between the tire and the fender like a piece of wood and turn the wheel a little bit first so I get more leverage and then hopefully we can get this lined up. All right, so I got the wheel turned out a little bit. Oh. Oh, there we go. So obviously I put this microfiber here just to protect the fender. 
Oh yeah, look at that. That is pretty much right where I want it to be. And that'll work. So I'm just gonna keep putting pressure there. Check my lines up here, everything's looking good. You can see that I switched to a ratchet just because I'm in more control of tightening things down this way. So right around. Here's a pretty good starting point. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Should still have a little bit of movement there. Door open. Don't need too much. Sure that nothing's touching. We look good. Looks like we're in the clear. I like it. There we go. That was what the length of this video ultimately. So maybe 15 minutes in total. Got the antenna delete plate on and got that door to fender gap fixed. So now every time that I walk past the car, I don't need to worry about, oh my God, look at that gap there, because whenever there's something wrong, your eye always just gravitates to it. Nobody else, well, a lot of you Fox Body guys have noticed, but to the average individual, nobody would have cared to notice or even given it a double take, but hey, I knew it was there. Now we can open and close the door. We don't have any touch points or anything like that. Gap up here looks good. Everything is even right here. The gap down along here is nice and even. And I really couldn't be happier with the outcome. Can put the hood down now. And I'm just curious to know if anything has changed here. We do have to remember this is an aftermarket hood. And um, you know, well, aftermarket stuff never really fits 100% to begin with. I think I can move it over just a little bit and that way we don't have to worry about any potential rubs or connections so maybe i will go ahead and do that of course that'll just be loosening the four bolts that uh, hold the hinge up on the hinges there and i'll just ever so slightly tweak it in fact i might only need to loosen two down and then just kind of shove it a little bit and you'd be amazed on how little you need to move things to get a lot of gap if that makes sense up the hood a little bit better you know it's not a hundred percent but it's an aftermarket hood so in terms of getting an aftermarket hood to fit perfectly well you could be in for a challenging time sometimes because you know you got your distances back here and sometimes these hoods are so thick in terms of the material they'll start catching on things so sometimes you just got to kind of work with the best situation that you have which this is pretty much there I, i'm comfortable with it from you know, a daily driver perspective, if I was trying to get into a show car, um, I would probably go back to a steel hood, but this one looks and feels the part for what I'm going for on this car. So there you guys have it, a quick little video, hood alignment, fender alignment, antenna delete plate install. So now what's left to this thing, I really just got to redo that trim. I don't think I'm gonna do a video on it because I've done trim restoration so many times already. If you guys are interested in it, make sure to check out some of my older videos. So we'll do that. I'm gonna upgrade those quarter windows because I do have a set from LMR, one of the blemish sets. So I'm just gonna go over those. Um, I'm still gonna spray them with the trim paint so everything matches, but um, I am in fact gonna go over them and I'll probably restore these ones that are on the car separately. Once I have them off, then it's easier for me to 
work with them and get all my materials and everything that I need to use to get them looking brand new again. So there you guys have it. A little bit more on the Cali Coupe. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys again for all your support. If you have followed all the way to the end of this video, you're probably already subscribed, but if you're not, make sure you do. Really appreciate the support. Motivates me and keeps me going in terms of making sure that I keep coming out with fresh content and keeping you guys entertained. So next time, we'll see you then.